The Universe by Seymour Simon. Genre. Expository text. Explains the nature of an object, an idea, or a theme. Look for information about the nature of the universe as you read. From Earth, we can look into space and study the universe with telescopes and other instruments. The Moon is Earth's nearest neighbor in space, only about a quarter of a million miles away. That's very close in space, almost next door. Still, it's very far away compared to the distance between places on Earth's surface. You'd have to travel around the Earth ten times in order to match the distance from the Earth to the Moon. The Sun, the closest star to us, is over 400 times farther away from us than the Moon is, about 93 million miles. The nearest star after our Sun is much farther away than that. But measuring the distance between stars and planets in miles is like measuring the distance around the world in inches. We measure the distance to the stars in light years, the distance that light travels in one year, which is close to six trillion miles. A spaceship speeding at ten miles per second would still take more than seventy thousand years to get to Alpha Centauri, the nearest star after the sun. A distance of 4.3 light years, or 25 trillion miles. For many years, our solar system was the only one we had ever seen. But in recent years, scientists using new instruments began to observe what looked like other solar systems in the making. These are two images, right, of gas and dust disks forming around young stars. The disks range in size from about two to eight times the diameter of our solar system. The glow in the center of each disk is a newly formed star, about one million years old. The disks do not mean, for certain, that planets will form, but the building blocks for planets are there. Now that they know so many young stars have planetary disks, scientists feel more optimistic about the possibility of locating other solar systems. Finding individual planets is more challenging than finding planetary disks because a single planet is much smaller and more compact than a whole solar system in the making. Still, we have discovered more planets around distant stars than in our own solar system. All stars are born within nebulas, which are eerie dark clouds of hydrogen gas and dust. Stars are not born singly, but in groups or clusters. Usually, each star grows at a different speed, and most clusters finally drift apart. Some of the young stars are ten thousand times brighter than our sun is now. This photo of the Eagle Nebula, also called M16, was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope in 1995. The Eagle Nebula is in a nearby star-forming region of the Milky Way galaxy. It is about seven thousand light years away from Earth. The new stars are the bright lights inside the finger-like bulges at the top of the nebula. Each fingertip is tens of billions of miles across, larger than our entire solar system. When stars get older, they cool off, swell up one hundred times larger, and turn red. These aging stars are called red giants. The red giants become very active. Blowing off violent gusts of hot gas from their surfaces into space, when a red giant has shed its outer layers, the hot core within the star makes the surrounding cloud of gases glow. This cloud is called a planetary nebula because early astronomers thought its shape and color looked like a planet. Planetary nebulas come in a variety of shapes. From narrow jets of exploding gases to peanut-shaped clouds to bright globes surrounding stars, what look like spaceships from a science fiction movie are really the result of a dying star's final outbursts. These mysterious space pods, right, are gigantic tadpole-shaped clumps of gas, each several billion miles across, twice the size of our solar system. The comet-like tails fan out around the central star like the spokes on a wheel. No one knows what will happen to the pods. Perhaps they will expand and disappear within a few hundred thousand years, or perhaps the dust particles inside each gas ball will collide and stick together. Planets the size of Earth, 
but frigid and icy, might form over time. Thousands of these icy worlds might escape the dead star and roam the dark space between the stars forever. Our sun is just one of about 200 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, a vast spiral of stars about 100,000 light years across. Viewed from the side, it looks like a lens with a thick bright center of stars and flattened edges. All the stars we see in the night sky are in our galaxy. Other galaxies are much too distant for us to see their individual stars. Our solar system is about 30,000 light years away from the center of the Milky Way. The central galaxy is much more crowded than our lonely part of space. In one star cluster near the center of the Milky Way, there are 100,000 stars in one cubic light year. But in our remote corner of the galaxy, there are no stars within four light years of our solar system. This is a radio photo of a star called Sagittarius A, near the center of the Milky Way. Hidden someplace within this photo, there might be an enormous black hole marking the true center of our galaxy. Scientists class galaxies by their shape. There are four main types of galaxies, spirals, ellipticals, barred spirals, and irregular-shaped galaxies. Spirals are disk-shaped, with older stars in the center and newer stars in the arms. Ellipticals are the most common and are shaped like balls or eggs. They contain mostly old stars. Barred spirals are spirals whose central stars form a bar. Irregulars are the rarest and do not fit any known pattern. Many galaxies in space are so distant that their light fades out before it reaches the Earth, and they can only be seen with radio telescopes. This radio image of a large elliptical galaxy called Fornax A is in the center of a distant cluster of galaxies. The central, bright white region shines with a light of more than 10 billion stars. Fornax A is so huge that it is swallowing nearby galaxies. The small spiral galaxy just above Fornax A may soon be captured. Scientists think that there are at least 100 billion galaxies in the universe, and each galaxy contains about 100 billion stars. There are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches in the world. With a high-powered telescope, scientists discovered 1,500 galaxies in different stages of their lives. From Earth, some of these galaxies are as faint as a flashlight on the moon would be. Looking at distant galaxies in the universe with a telescope is like using a time machine to peer into the past. Light from the dimmest galaxies has taken 10 billion years to reach us. Among the strangest objects in the universe are black holes. A black hole is a region of space where matter is squeezed together so tightly and the pull of its gravity is so powerful that nothing can escape from it, not even light. It is impossible to see a black hole but we can see vast amounts of matter being sucked into the hole, never to return. Black holes seem to come in two sizes, small and super large. The small ones are formed when stars collapse and are only a few miles in diameter. Most we cannot detect. Scientists think that the super large black holes are probably at the center of most galaxies. This drawing shows a spiral of dust and gases 800 light years wide being sucked into a giant black hole in the center of a nearby galaxy. The black hole contains more than one billion times the amount of matter in our Sun, all packed tightly together. These discoveries have led to new mysteries. Does every galaxy have a black hole at its center? If there's a black hole in a galaxy, does that mean that all the stars in the galaxy will eventually disappear inside it? What starts a black hole, and does it ever end? Quasars are as mysterious as black holes. Before stars vanish into a black hole, they give off energy in a burst of light and radio waves. This outpouring of energy is called a quasar. About the size of our solar system, quasars contain the mass of more than a million suns, yet they pour out 100 to 1,000 times as much light as an entire galaxy of 100 billion stars. Does life exist on Earth-like planets in distant solar systems? Will the universe expand forever, 
or finally stop and then collapse into a gigantic black hole. Searching for answers about the universe is like exploring a dark, mysterious ocean without being able to leave the shore. But with the Hubble Space Telescope and other new methods of gathering information, we are just at the beginning of a golden age of discovery. No one knows what fantastic places we will see.